Boy, it's a beautiful day out here. It's good to see you all. Hope everybody's enjoying their Saturday. Like to make sure you all share the video so that uh, folks can see us when we're doing it. I'm Black Dragon, National President of the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, and author of my new book, Sergeant at Arms Bible, Prospects Bible. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I thought about today as I woke up this morning. Last night I saw this interesting video on YouTube. They were burying Bishop Eddie Long. I saw his, uh, his uh, funeral. And as I looked and I saw all of his generals and lieutenants, and then they showed the audience and it was just packed with thousands and thousands of people. And I noticed that the lieutenants were on the stage in front of the podium saying, hey, whatever you do, do not depart this family now that our leader is gone because we're only getting started. We just built something here and it's only just the beginning. And as I looked at all those dedicated people out there, it dawned on me. Are you leaving something in your legacy that your people can follow when you're gone? What kind of president are you? What kind of leader are you? What kind of person are you whom God has entrusted a flock of people to follow? Whether you're a badass biker or a minister Boy Scout leader, whatever. What is your legacy? We who have followed some of these great leaders have seen these brothers fall from their ladders, and it's been very painful to watch. It's easy to have a whole bunch of people around you when things are going great, when everybody's bowing down to you. Hey, Bishop, hey, President, hey, whomever. But what about when social media's got you, when you're in the newspapers, when they're calling you bad names, running your name through the ground, when nobody else wants to be around you? Are your people around you? Have you given your people some type of leadership by which they say, I don't give a damn what you say? That's my leader, and I'm with him through thick or thin. That only comes when you lead your people with the truth. That only comes when you lead your people through example. That only comes when your people know that you love them and you respect them, and that their desires, their wishes, their safety, their concerns, are your desires and your wishes and your concerns. Are you training people so that they can take over when you're gone? So that when you fall from grace, they're there to pick you up and hold you? That's what the brotherhood is all about. That's what the extended family is all about. Do the brothers give you a hand up when you're down? None of us are perfect. None of us are without sin. All of us can fall. But if you have led from your heart, if you know how to talk to people the right way, do you curse people out, treat them like animals, talk to them like they're dogs? Do you stop people from growing? Are you so afraid that somebody's gonna get your position that you break the bylaws, you make the rules up as you go along? Is that what kind of presidency you're running? Or are you running the kind of presidency where when you're done, they say to you, good job. Your people come, 
They surround your funeral and they bury you like a king. Not a god, but a king. A leader of men. A leader of people. Someone who cared. When I asked my brothers to ride, I asked them to ride with me. I don't ask my brothers to ride while I'm sitting on a stool. When I race my brothers through the mountain, I'm trying to kill them for as long as I can until they say, sit down, National, you can't beat me no more. But damn it, they spend years trying. You must lead from your heart, Presidents. These people, they follow us because they love us, not because they have to. But we're not paying no paychecks here. They follow us because God has given us the privilege to lead. It's not a right, it's not a birthright. My dad was the president, therefore I'm supposed to be the president. There's no royalty in motorcycle clubs. There is only dedication, hard work, and deserving the honor upon which your brothers have bestowed in their vote for you to lead. Now listen, leadership requires experience. Every mistake that I tell you about, I have personally made. I've talked crazy to my fellows. I've been jealous. I have not always been deserving. But through my passion and my desire, they have seen my commitment towards excellence. And they have stayed with me and stuck with me all the way. We don't lead because we're special. We lead because God has given us a path by which we should follow to enrich and better the lives of our brothers and their families and the extended family we call the MC. Wrapped around a love, right iron across the United States of America, rain, sleet, or snow, it really doesn't matter. Because baby, we're gonna always ride. What legacy do you leave? Do you train your men? Do you praise in public and criticize in private? Or are you just so darn, uh, so darn prideful that you have to destroy everyone around you. You have to learn how to talk to these brothers, get inside their minds, and lead them in a way in which they can be proud. So that when you're gone, because you don't get to do this forever, I don't care who you are, you might get one term or 20, but sooner or later you gotta go. And when you've gone and you've departed, has your legacy been that of a true person who loved his brothers. You know, I once heard it said, how can you say you're a Christian and you love God when you can't even love the brothers? You love God you've never seen, but you can't love the brothers you see every day. How can you call yourself a motorcycle club and say you respect the colors when you can't even respect your brothers that you see each and every day, when you can't respect your president when you can't respect the bylaws upon which you all ride. That's not anything but BS. A lot of us need these colors for a lot of reasons. The brothers I find in the motorcycle club, a lot of us, we didn't have fathers. We didn't have brothers. I didn't even meet my blood brothers until I was almost 50. I had no brothers until I ran into the Black Sabbath Nation. Then all of a sudden I had all kinds of brothers. Guys that were like me, some that were exactly like me and some that really quite weren't like me. But we formed this relationship, for me, that's now been 27 years. Now, we have prospects and we have brothers that have been around a while and the evolution moves on. But the evolution is guided by you, President. It's guided by you, leader. When I was in the Navy, we had leadership development courses. They taught people how to lead. Motorcycle clubs don't really have that. So we have to seek ourselves the information necessary 
to take our brothers to the next level. The motorcycle club you have is the motorcycle club you were inherited. But I always say, if you don't like the club you have, recruit the club you want. Create within your brotherhood love, affection, and desire to be with one another <coughs> together as one. T-A-O, Tau, together as one. Together as one. It's about we, not about I. It's about the team, not about <coughs> self. It's not about the front patch, but rather the back patch. The patch who says what we are. The Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, since 1974 and still strong, a breed apart. And what are you? And who are you? And do your men follow you? If they don't, look at yourself in the mirror and turn it around. I love you all. Ride this cold Saturday and have a great damn time. I'm Black Dragon, National President, and I'll see you later. Get skinny.